In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Insert Fastener tool in Fusion 360, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at Insert Fastener in Fusion. Now, this is something that got added in the last big update of Fusion. But if you didn't read the blog post or you weren't really paying attention, you might not even know that it's here. Because unlike Configure and some of the other tools that show up like Automate Modeling, this didn't make its way onto the toolbar by default. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how it works, where the hardware goes, and how it compares to using something like Insert McMaster Car Component. So first we'll start Insert Fastener. And when you get started the first time you use, you want to make sure that you go into the settings and make sure that you are able to search for all of the different options. By default, they're not turned on. So if you want to use shorthand, for example, SHC for short uh, for socket head cap screw, then make sure that you have that shorthand turned on. So we're going to do sh the SHCS for socket head cap screw. And then you can see everything that appears. We're using metric for this and all standards, so it's going to bring everything up. I'm going to take a look at, let's see here, the second one, which is a broached hex socket head cap screw. Once we select the fastener we want to use, we then get some information on the screen. We have some general sizes, but the best thing about this is that if we toggle on select similar and we simply select an edge, it'll be able to find similar holes. And what this means is that we can quickly and easily add hardware across an entire design if we have similar holes. Now, these were all created in a single hole feature, so it works out perfectly. The nominal length in this case is 12, but you see that there are some default sizes. We can increase this. We can say that the finish is, let's say we want to do a zinc coat. And if we want to add a part number, we can do that. I'm going to select Create and Continue, which is going to add a fastener folder to my browser, and it's going to add all four of these. And then I can continue adding more. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to select a single hole here. And then I need to select the position. So this is going to be my face. And then I want to increase that length. So 25 isn't going to be quite long enough. 50 will go all the way to the other side. But I need to put a nut on the other side of this. So I need to make sure that it extends at least all the way through. I'm going to create and continue. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to search for a nut. And we can do this by clearing all of the different searches. We can go into the folder for nuts, pick a specific size, in this case hex. And then we can go through and find a hex nut that works for us. Now this again can be a little bit tricky. As you scroll to the right, you'll notice that we have some shorthand, some information about it and the standards. You can obviously filter these a bit more if you want to. But for us, I'm just going to go ahead and pick one, hex jam nut, and then I need to select where I want to put it. I'm going to select here, select the face where it goes, and then we can select the green check mark on the screen, or we can create and continue. I'm going to say OK, and now I've got a 10 millimeter bolt, a 10 millimeter nut, and then I've got the other four 8 millimeter bolts. Now, if you need to add a second piece of hardware, you can come up here right click and notice that we have insert similar fastener. So insert similar fastener will allow us to select the location. We can say okay, and we can do the same thing for the nut as well. Right click and we can insert a similar fastener. We can pick the location and we can say okay. Now, one thing that ends up happening, if you've got the select similar option turned on, you can end up with too many pieces of hardware. All we need to do is select and delete. We'll say okay and this leaves me with the correct number. So if you're using that option, be very careful that you don't accidentally add too many bolts, nuts, or washers. So now that we've seen how this works, let's talk about where the hardware actually goes, because this can be a bit tricky. Now, if you are an admin on the team that you're working in, it's not really a big problem, but if you're not an admin, then you will have a potential problem because what ends up happening is there's a fasteners project that gets created. And inside of here, we have nuts, bolts, and washers. And if we look in here, you can see I've created four different ones on different projects. And these are all referencing this specific location. Now, there are ways in which we can change this. Again, if you're an admin, you do have some options for transferring things around. But in general, 
it's all in the single location because if you are using common off-the-shelf parts, if you're using the same hardware all the time, you want to have it all come from the same location. This means that if we swap out things like a part number or potentially a surface finish like zinc or an uncoated hardware, then all the designs that are linked to this will also change. You can see there's a chain link icon because these are external. So that's where the hardware is saved. You can open them up, you can make edits to them, for example. We can edit in place, we can use edit fastener, which would go back to our fastener dialog, or we can open them up individually. We can change the properties like the part number and so on. So that's how the fastener dialog works. That's where the location of the fasteners will be inside of your data panel. But how does this really compare to using something like McMaster Car? Well, the big difference here is that traditionally when you're building a design, if you use something like McMaster Car and we search for screws and bolts and we just go through these dialogues, eventually we're gonna end up with a part number. Now the part number itself is critical when you're talking about a bill of material downstream. Now the bill of material is going to be known as your parts list, and that's how you're going to do your purchasing. So if we come through here, we can say step with or without threads, we can say download, and then the hardware gets inserted into our assembly as a component. Now, the pros and cons here are going to depend on what you're doing with your own designs. The pro is that inside of our assembly, what we end up having is a part that has the McMaster car part number and all the information that surrounds it. So if you go to purchase these, you already have that part number associated with it. The downside to this is that you just inserted this hardware, in this case, a socket head cap screw, into an assembly. And this is internal to our assembly. What does that mean? Well, that means that if you use the same bolt, nut, screw, whatever, on any of your designs, you're gonna have duplicates and copies in every project and every design that you work on. So it's not a single source location like a hardware library or content central kind of thing. It just means that you have to be a bit more careful. Could you do something similar? Yeah, you could have a project and you could simply pull the hardware from your project and it would work just fine. But again, there are pros and cons to, to sort of working with each of these. Now, what I will say is that if you do open your hardware, and you do have an appropriate McMaster MSC Fastenal part number that goes with your part, then you can obviously go into your properties. You can configure your part name, the description, and the part number, so that way it matches your McMaster car number for purchasing. That way when you make your parts list or your bill of materials and your detailed drawings, that way you have the right numbers. It takes a little bit more work on the front end, but what I found is that oftentimes with designs, you're using the same bolt or very similar bolts over and over again, tweaking and changing some things like the lengths and sometimes the coatings. But that's a basic overview on how the insert fastener tool works, where the hardware is located, and how it compares to something like insert for McMaster car. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. If you've used this and you've had success or failures, I'd like to know that as well. If you have any questions, leave that in the comments as well. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.